Hola, bom dia. Carl Munson here with the Good Morning Portugal live stream YouTube channel and podcast. Thanks to all of you, however you uh, consume and take part in this project, the Good Morning Portugal project, which I haven't said this for a while, but really it's for um, explorers and expats, for diggers and dreamers, for people who want to come to Portugal, for people who are already in Portugal. Um, it's for you to find out more on how to do that, what life is like here, uh, what you can expect, uh, overcoming the difficulties and celebrating the victories, celebrating the good life, celebrating all that's good and wonderful about Portugal. So today we are looking at um, the birthday that we missed of uh, Fernando Pachon, uh, whose name I may have uh, pronounced terribly. And um, we'll get some help tomorrow because I am so pleased to announce that uh, Filomena will be here tomorrow with Portuguese for beginners. We've been a bit lazy recently, haven't we, with our Portuguese? Although that said, look, the quiz today, if you look at the bottom of the screen, um, and for those of you who won't be seeing this on the podcast, what does Quatro Geração de Pajo mean? Okay, so we'll come back to that. Um, I, I imagine people will already be Googling that to find out Google Translate, um, but it is the inscription on our chosen bottle of wine this week for the Good Morning Portugal Wine Club Saturday edition, third tasting. So I just interrupted myself telling you what we're looking at today. Fernando Pachon, uh, it was his birthday, um, a very important literary and cultural figure in Portugal. So we'll have a very quick look at Fernando Pachon. This is what we do. We miss these events and then we go back and look at them. Maybe next year we'll be on top of it. Um, the immigration numbers are up. The population of Portugal grew for the first time in a long time. We'll have a look at that news story. Um, I, I touched upon Safe Communities Portugal, which I hadn't done for a long time. Uh, we did that yesterday, looking at uh, fire safety. And going back to Safe Communities Portugal, it's kind of all kicking off there uh, in terms of, um, I mean, they keep abreast of what's going on. And they've had to... Um, uh, deal with the controversy that's in the air at the moment. It's, these are such touchy times, aren't they? We, us, we've got to stick together and uh, figure it out, you know, rather than becoming more polar and more divided. I like to think we have a very broad church and a very broad set of opinions here, and we, sh we should be able to talk about things uh, rather than exclude people. Excluding people, obviously, you do have to have as a sanction, but I see no sense in just uh, shaming people and um, telling people what to say and think and then threatening them with eviction. Uh, there's too much of that in the world at the moment. And uh, I'm all for, as you know, um, people being nice, you know, don't be a uh, plonker is, is quite a good uh, motto in life, isn't it? You know, do it unto others as you, as you would be done unto the golden rule. Can we not go back to that? Um, so um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go back to Safe Communities Portugal and just try and get an overview of what's going on because let's face it, it's very confusing at the moment, isn't it? Where are we? What, where, where do you have to wear a mask? Um, should you wear a mask all the time? Should you wear a mask whilst having sexual intercourse, etc.? Or is that just the UK? Um, so some of those questions, you know, to bring an idea together of where we're at in the uh, pandemic and, and the, the response to it from the government and what's going on around the country. Some very good coverage from Safe Communities Portugal. Um, we'll look at a few of uh, Fernando Pachal's uh, very special quotes um, and contributions to the um, the mind of humanity, because he was quite an incredible guy. And then a Casa de Dia from a new company that I've not uh, featured before, Home Key Portugal. I might have done actually one or two, but we've got a beautiful uh, gist style, uh, is it a, a kinta they're calling it, uh, in Castelo Branco uh, later on. Another bargain, and I am focusing a lot on these kind of writer's retreats in the woods kind of properties for people who just want to get away from it all. So we are focusing on that, and I think there is a big upturn and upsurge in interest in those kind of properties. So um, whether, I mean, I told you yesterday, didn't I, that this, you know, there, might, there was a little bit of rain yesterday possibly around the place, but and there might be a bit of cloud. But generally speaking, the whole week ahead, is very, very favorable and a lot of high temperatures heading our way. Hence why we looked at uh, fire safety and, and forest fire preparedness. Um, what I'll do today, I mean, there's nothing more to add to that. We are looking forward to some really hot days ahead, okay, especially from Sunday. And I'll just tell you that the, um, it'd be lovely to get some photos. Uh, talking of photos, yes, thank you very much. I'll just share this with you one more time. Yeah, that pause there in the podcast was me showing the picture sent in by Claire McGibbon of Falesia down there in the Algarve, uh, a morning picture. So that's what I want from you. Either pictures of the Bondia Good Morning where you are in Portugal, 
other parts of the world, if you're aspiring to come to Portugal and you want to show us your view currently, that's fine too. Um, and also happy homesteading pictures. I'm going to do that as well. We're going to use that. So that's the placeholder. Before we get started in the morning, as people are gathering, we feature one of your photos. Delighted to do that. And we've had contributions from Gary, from Peter, from Claire this morning, and from Owen. Um, and we've had a lot of lovely pictures in Happy Homesteaders group, actually, of people's plots and, and their, their um, produce, plots and produce. So we'll be featuring photos of those as well. So do send them in, please. Paul Williams is here. First in this morning, I think. Bon dia, todos. Good morning to everybody from Paul Williams. What's going on in your photo? There's a lovely looking photo, Paul. Um, I think drinks in hand there. What were you celebrating? Uh, good morning, everybody from Blue Sky Falesia. Have I said that, said that right? I think I thought it was Falesia, um, Claire and Steve. I'm sure you'll correct me. Are you liking that part of the Algarve? Tell me more about it. Tell us all more about that, please. And uh, yet tomorrow, uh, Philomena will be here, Beginner's Guide to Portuguese. So don't miss that. Uh, we're going to talk. We're going to be speaking Portuguese. I'll be making a fool of myself, um, obviously not for the first time ever on this live stream, but talking Portuguese, I think she's quite a... Uh, a fair but firm teacher, if you know what I mean. So um, let's have a look at the Portugal resident for this a story of theirs. Um, credit where it's due, and that would be to... Oh, no, nobody has taken uh, the credit or responsibility for this article. But suffice to say, <clears throat> excuse me, Portuguese population grows for the first time in 10 years, thanks to immigrants. That would be us. The port, well, I take, I'm making that assumption is mostly immigrants um, and uh, expats and explorers listening to this. But yeah, of course, if you're Portuguese, forgive me. Um, and if you are Portuguese, what do you make of this? The Portuguese population has finally grown, grown in, in capital letters there for the first time in 10 years. National Statistics Institute, INE, registered the point. It's not massive. The 0.19% growth in 2019, stressing the increase was all down to the numbers of people moving here and becoming resident. Now, I wonder if those folks who we mentioned in the golden visa, who are only here for two weeks of the year, are uh, measured and, and, and included in those figures. But anyway, yeah, that little bit of growth, first time in 10 years, if it wasn't for these immigrants, the country as a whole would still be losing citizens, but as careless, by 0.25%. So that's interesting. As it is, the resident population continues to age. And is that a reflection on the sort of immigrants that are coming? <laughs> You know who you are, or we know who we are, with half the population now over 45.5. That's 4.3 years older than it was in 2009. So it really interesting. Oh, look, there's a lovely practice Portuguese advert over there. Do recommend those guys as well as Philomena. So many ways to learn Portuguese. There's no excuse, everybody. And a lovely shot, a street scene there uh, of Lisbon. Uh, looking down to his press de commercial, is it not? Um, <clears throat> right, so... Um, yeah, interesting to look at the population makeup, demographics of Portugal. Aging population growing ever so slightly thanks to uh, immigrant influx. You may or may not think that's a good thing. Uh, more about that as we as we look at Safe Communities Portugal um, after we've had a look at the life of uh, Fernando Pachon. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, the, 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 the population here continues to age. Um, and I know that, you know, we've had a child here. And I think he's been granted sort of, you know, immediate uh, citizenship, I believe. I'm not sure. You know, so many things are so sort of grey and cloudy and misty at the moment. So much going on, isn't there? But I think, generally speaking, you know, the, the, the idea is for Portugal to remain a welcoming place and get the population boosted. Did I hear that, you know, it's close on a million immigrants already in, in this country? And you would think, wouldn't you, from some of the fear-mongering of people, that if you have so many immigrants in the country... Um, you are asking for trouble. You know, this is one th uh, thought process among people, isn't it? In, 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 the, in these fear-based times, I've got to say, Portugal's making an incredible job of, um, you know, being, living in a multicultural way, or so it would seem. And uh, we have had nothing but um, a welcome. Um, you know, just generally speaking, people are very welcoming. There's just um, an assumption, I think, you know, that people are people. And, you know, like I said before, the golden rule, do as you would be done by. And people seem to rock along pretty nicely here. And obviously, you know, that is a, a sort of caricature and, and just, you know, an anecdote. Really, it's not, you know, not. The, I'm sure there are difficulties and flashpoints at times, as there would be with um, over 10 million people 
Um, but when you've got a land mass of this size with only 10 million people and, you know, people are spaced out and, and there's so much going for Portugal, perhaps those are all contributory factors to why it's such a pleasant and easy going place to be and why the, um, the, the, the resident indigenous population seem to be so welcoming towards other people. Love to hear your views on that. Um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's an issue of our times, isn't it? Is it's how we get along um, with each other. Excuse me one moment. Yes. OK, nothing serious. As I've said right from the start, whenever I've coughed on this program, um, it's always sort of been a slight source of worry. But now I've got something stuck in my throat, I think. I really must bring water with me to the studio back bedroom, such as it is. Um, but I really do have something stuck in my throat now and I will endeavour to keep talking. Um, so, uh, Steve and Claire, I noticed I spelt it wrong. Falasia. Plonka Rodney. Yes. Um, just use that word plonker once and now it's uh, become epidemic in the show um, and she spelt it wrong twice here you go here is the uh, actual spelling f-a-l-e with an accent on it s-i-a uh, for the final time and for owen uh, i would say that is a uh, good morning to you good day to you uh, my beautiful friends uh, beautiful people Almash, what a lovely word that is. Um, I know there's a few more people lurking this morning, so do say who you are, where you are, and how you're doing, and have a crack at what does Quatro Gerachon de Paisjon mean. I think I did that fairly well. Okay, so let's go with that wonderful um, uh, sound. Oh, beautiful souls. Alma, a soul, of course. Good morning to you, beautiful souls. Thank you, Owen. That's really delightful. Um, okay. Uh, let's go with with more Portuguese pronunciation before we go and, and wrap up. Actually, penultimate piece is with Safe Communities Portugal. Ultimate is uh, the Casa do Dia, which we do. Anyone finding that useful? Anyone sharing that with people who, who's, whose friends and family might be wanting to come to Portugal? Every day now, uh, we feature a Casa do Dia. Along the homesteading lines, it has to be said, apart from that five-star hotel place, uh, that uh, real James Bond kind of gaff that I shared uh, earlier on this week. But um, you know, I think I thought it would be a useful service um, to make the videos of the Casa do Dia. Um, and I wonder if anyone is sharing those. Do you share this at all, actually, or do you keep it to yourselves? There's an interesting um, thing. Is this our own little club in the mornings or are you sharing it far and wide? Obviously, from my point of view, I'd love it if you share it far and wide. But I do understand as well how we have a nice little intimate club here each morning. And uh, you might want to keep it to yourselves. Good morning, everyone from Fundau. Some beautiful photographs from Joseph. Uh, of his farmstead um, he's quite sort of uh, shy about his farming skills I have to say and there's no need to be because he's an absolutely amazing farmer uh, what he's creating over there in Fundal. check out those pictures in the happy homesteaders group of his growing keep it to myself says Owen I need to find one <laughs> of my own oh I see here right yeah he likes it uh, as a best kept secret and not sharing with everyone else until he's found his own pad. Chris Wilson, morning from not so sunny UK, a regular podcast listener on the commute, but listening live today. Fantastic, Chris. Lovely to have you here. And um, really great as well to hear from a regular podcast listener. And I'm very open to your feedback on the podcast. I know in many ways it seems like a poor relation, doesn't it, a podcast? And, you know, basically it's just the audio track from the, this morning show. So you do lose out on some of the visuals. Let me know how, if in any way, I can improve the podcast. And I think I should do a few bonuses for you lovely podcast listeners. 14,000 plus downloads and approaching 300 episodes. Um, it's all, it's like, you know, it's the tradition of Good Morning Portugal. That's where we started. Documenting our journey here in Portugal was the Munson family. But thank you, Chris. Really appreciate you joining us live this morning. Uh, hi, Chris. Uh, yes, a warm welcome extended from Owen and Linda um, saying good morning to everyone as well. Good morning to you, Linda, over there in Alvayazara. OK, a uh, little bit then about this man whose birthday we didn't celebrate properly uh, the other day. We will we will try um, good old Wikipedia for this, for this rather. Look, isn't that a good look? Uh, and for you, yes, listening on the podcast, we have a man. Is that a Homburg hat? But a really nice wide brimmed, not massively wide brimmed, but a generous brim on it. You know, not a trilby, um, not a pork pie hat, something domed and with a generous brim on it. And I've got to say, it's a very nice black and white portrait of uh, of Pachal in 1914. And I do have a little meme to go with the, with today's show. You'll see the cover art of this is him 
with a fantastic quote that relates directly to uh, expats and explorers. So, so that you know, so that you can hold your head high in Portuguese conversation, Fernando Antonio Noguera Paixão uh, was a Portuguese poet, writer, literary critic, translator, publisher, and philosopher, described as one of the most significant literary figures of the 20th century and one of the greatest poets in the Portuguese language. He also wrote in and translated from English and French, and uh, his birthday was the 13th of June. Uh, Pachal was a prolific writer, and not only in, under his own name, for he created approximately 75 other names to write under. He did not call them all pseudonyms, I guess a bit technical here, but because he felt that some did not capture their true independent intellectual life and instead called them heteronyms. It's like he is a multiple personality writer, um, really getting into those 75 different um, personas. Uh, these imaginary figures sometimes held unpopular or extreme views. That is the way to do it, isn't it? Um, and there is much more to um, to share and read with you from Wikipedia. But what could be more boring than, than a guy sat reading Wikipedia to you in the morning? But I do commend you to look at uh, his life. Um, he's a very well-loved and celebrated figure in Portuguese culture. Um, just to add to that, um, a little bit about well, some of his quotes. So let's go to those. Um, we've got a, a, a hello, a greeting from the UK Cotswolds, beautiful part of the world. Bon dia from UK Cotswolds. Love the program. Hope to be in your Portugal. Sorry, hope to be in Portugal. I don't know why I said that. Hope to be in Portugal from July the 9th, starting our own research to move to your beauty country, beautiful country. Thanks, Jeff. Really nice to, always to hear from you uh, and from your lovely part of the world in the UK there. Tell us how it's going. Uh, how's your process going? Can we be of any assistance to you? Okay, um, some quotes then from Fernando, if I may be so familiar with him as to call him that. Uh, here are his top 25 quotes. We won't necessarily read them all, but I think we should share a few with you. I do like a pithy quote uh, for breakfast. The value of things is not the time they last, but the intensity with which they occur. That is why there are unforgettable moments and unique people so true and we know that don't we as this bunch of characters here in the good morning portugal live stream um it is it yeah life is more about intensity um than than the long run i think life is made of moments i, I you know i've heard that expressed in a different way now here is a cracker i think and relates directly to us life is what we make of it true uh, that's the, you know th that could be a quote in its own right and we know that don't we it's a sort of standing um cliche in a way life is what we make of it but then he goes on to say travel is the traveler see this is particularly um pertinent to us lot travel is the traveler what we see isn't what we see but what we are and i'm putting that uh, emphasis on what we are and um yeah i guess your experience of portugal will be a lot about how you see the world and how the world occurs to you as much as anything else. Another one, the feelings that hurt most, the emotions that sting most are those that are absurd. And that's, again, very timely, isn't it? Because um, there are some pretty absurd things going on at the moment. The longing for impossible things precisely because they are impossible. Nostalgia for what never was. The desire for what could have been. There's some saudade creeping into this, isn't there? Regret over not being someone else dissatisfaction with the world's existence all these half tones of the soul's consciousness create in us a painful landscape an eternal sunset of what we are and this my friends is why he is the one of the greatest if not the greatest portuguese poet um here's another one bit random but like you know you get the gist and this is for homesteaders who are embarking on a project something for everybody here stones in the road i save every single one and one day I'll build a castle. Make of that what you will. Now, is that to do with experiences, stones in the road, or is it literal? You know, did he actually build a castle of his of, of the, those things he collected every single day? Wow, loving this guy. Uh, there is a time when it is necessary to abandon used clothes. Again, like minimalism here and homesteading, which already have the shape of our body, and to forget our paths, which takes us always to the same places. This is the time to cross the river. And if we don't dare do it, we will have stayed forever 
beneath ourselves. That's for you guys who are on your way to Portugal. There is a time when it's necessary to abandon the used clothes. These are the old ways, right? Which already have the shape of our body and to forget our paths, which takes us always to the same places. Those old paths, the same places, those routines that we want to be free of uh, and start a new life here in Portugal. This is the time to cross the river. And if we don't dare do it, we will have stayed forever beneath ourselves. Some great encouragement there from the great bard of Portugal to get on with it and live your life and come to Portugal. I wasn't meant for reality, but life came and found me. <laughs> this guy is so awesome. Art consists of making others feel what we feel. And just one more for you. Oh, no, two more. I've got to read that one as well. I am nothing. I'll never be anything. I couldn't want to be something. Apart from that, I have in me all the dreams in the world. Apart from that, I have in me all the dreams in the world. What an inspiration. And finally, uh, this could be uh, useful to remember in these crazy times. There are no norms. All people are exceptions to a rule that doesn't exist. Now, I find him all, uh, you know, in one go, like liberating, a very excellent commentator on the human condition, inspiring, fantastic. I've got to sneak another one in. The world belongs to those, sorry, the world belongs to who doesn't feel the primary condition to be a practical man is the absence of sensitivity what what is he saying there the world belongs to who doesn't feel is he talking about the world you know the this this crazy world is he talking about donald trump possibly there oh my goodness everything is worthwhile if the soul is not small okay i'm going to stop now i'm going to stop because i could read him all day evidently clearly but it's time to move on now i hope you enjoyed that um Hold on. What's, what was this? Running around like a big Wally as usual. Uh, so we've had plonker and Wally as two words from the UK this morning that might need some further description. Uh, Paul is saying in his profile pic there, uh, my picture is celebrating my wife uh, Lita's later, I think, or Lita, do forgive me, uh, later's birthday on the island of Principe at Makaira Lodge last year. A truly stunning place. We'll have to have a look at that. Um, at the uh, yeah, Principe Island, Portuguese island, of course. Uh, and yes, I, I've got come up, taken Mrs. M out of context. Hola, how is everyone this fine day? Oh, I see. Good, thank you. Um, running around like a big wally as usual. So there's a bit of cross talk in the community there, which I heartily encourage. Okay, let's have a look at some of this. Um, let us endeavor to um, see what we can do. Anyone crack that yet? Quatro Gerachon de Pajon. What does it mean? Um, I think I've got the first bit. Not sure what the second bit means. Um, and uh, I want to share. This is this is a bit deep, and and you might want to steer this conversation from the uh, convenience and comfort of the comments box there. But situation report. Uh, this is Wednesday, the seventeenth of June. Today, um, the good morning, Port good morning, Portugal. To Wednesday, seventeenth of June. Uh, we will keep our report quite neutral today due to the continued number of uninformed posts on our Facebook pages that have tied up our volunteers for hours each day, removing and replying when we want to concentrate on the reporting of facts and official guidance. There you go. Uh, those who post these unhelpful comments, please think about this and post elsewhere. <laughs> sending, it, sending it over to us, maybe. This is really undermining our important mission to report facts as an officially recognized Portuguese Civil Protection Association during this pandemic, see below. Now, the, I, I would agree, Safe Communities Portugal done a cracking job on um, re reporting and recording every incident that goes on in Portugal. You know, they have a close relationship with the authorities and they do a fantastic job. And also, this is the issue at stake here. People want to speak, don't they? People are feeling confused, misled, um, uncertain, anxious, worried. And all of this is kind of bleeding out everywhere, isn't it? So I think, you know, fair enough, Safe Communities Portugal, your place should be kind of pretty sacred and report the facts. But I think, and I would like to think of us as a place where people can speak openly and freely and, you know, be open to challenge and take responsibility for what they're saying. Um, and um, I'm thinking I might have to have a phone in or, or a page specifically that's for robust conversation and exchanges you know, without people being idiots, but you know, th this needs, people need to be heard. You cannot, I don't think you can deal with things by shutting people up. You know, where does that go when you shut people up? What does, what happens to kids, for example, and teenagers when you just shut them down? 
uh, and don't let them speak out and don't talk through what they need to speak about. As crazy as you might think it is, as crazy as you might think other people's opinions are. So um, I want to pick out a few things here uh, from the uh, Safe Communities Portugal. Uh, and we haven't done this for a really long time, but the um, the COVID statistics, uh, now the DGS announced on Tuesday the existence of over 1,500 deaths now and 37,000, over 37,000 cases of COVID-19 in Portugal since the beginning of the pandemic. The number of deaths rose from Monday by two, while the number of infected people increased from 37,036 to 37,336, so it's plus 300, which represents an increase of 0.8%. Now, if there's any goodness in this, it's that that, that, that figure remains small, right? That it, below, it stays below 1%, uh, which is the anticipated number, I believe. There are 423 hospitalized patients, eight less than Monday, 71 are intensive care units, minus two compared to Monday. Number of recovered cases uh, rose to 23,212. That's an additional 360. The region of Lisbon and the Val de Tejo were the largest number of outbreaks that have been recorded. The COVID-19 pandemic reached 15,000, over 15,000 confirmed cases there, 236 more recorded last Monday. The North region continues to record the highest number of infections, 17,000 plus. The Central region has nearly 4,000 confirmed cases and the Algarve rose to 407 and Alentejo maintains 286 cases. So then there's talk there of uh, possible um, scientific breakthroughs uh, with certain, um, certain what would they be called, compounds, chemicals, treatments, drugs. Um, and, yeah, there is the re reporting of the 16 positive cases related to an illegal party in Lagos. Uh, Alcabasa, 27 test positive in a care home. Uh, and see, this is the standard of reporting that you get at Safe Communities Portugal if you want to do that. We stopped doing this. We stopped doing the sort of daily death toll. I found it, found it really depressing, and you can find it out in a number of places. And I do recommend Safe Communities Portugal. And I am concerned that people need to speak and that we, I see ourselves as a platform for people speaking and having, you know, intelligent conversation about whatever it is people need to say. A lot of shutting down going on. I can't see that going well. Um, in business news, uh, traveling entertainers protested at the DGS with T-shirts, black T-shirts bearing the slogan, we want to work. Um, and that had uh, people who, I guess, who want to work and, and entertain people because there's a massive amount of, uh, it's a big part of the economy and people's livelihoods to um, travel and entertain throughout the Fester season. That has been completely ruined uh, this year and not likely to happen. Um this one I wanted to share with you as well. Pandemic had cost mun municipalities millions. A first survey of the municipalities still to be concluded indicates that these municipalities during the pandemic lost revenues and made investments in a total of more than 500 million euros, uh, said today an official of the Association of National Municipalities. Um, this is the, um, the proverbial that's rolling downhill towards us, I believe, and that's why I maintain uh, that it's, the future is in happy homesteading. OK, and I maintain that I think you need to be more self-sufficient um, and interdependent and create livelihood on a local community level. We really got to get with that right now, because I don't think the government, any government around the world can cope with the um, precariousness of the economies that have been created and that we've been trying to live in. And not very well, let's face it, for a lot of people in the last few decades. We need a different solution, folks, and I think we are part of that solution. Uh, finally, from Safe Communities Portugal, uh, survey reveals satisfaction of teleworking. Now, this is a, a nice change, isn't it, in, in working culture? It might be one of the upsides, you might say, if you like being at home, if you like being with your family. Not everyone does, um, let's face it, but if you like being at home and you've, and you've got out of the habit of going to work, more than 54%, more, sorry, 54%, more than half of respondents in a survey uh, on teleworking from the Corvo 19 barometer said they were satisfied with the situation, but only 37 expressed satisfaction with the balance between uh, distance work and personal life. Okay, according to researchers from the National School of Public Health, the ENSP, these data may be related to respondents' perception that work requirements are greater when working at telework, 40%. <laughs> In fact, 59%, it goes on to say here, of the participants consider that they work more hours than usual. And that's an interesting trend. And I'm sure the corporations love that. People working at home work more. And 42% say it's not possible to disconnect from work in order to rest. And that's an issue. However, approximately 70% of respondents consider that they have complete autonomy and flexibility to decide how and when work ends. 
about 10 o'clock with an aguardente. Um, well, 40% say that they sometimes set a working time. So there you go. Thank you very much, Safe Communities Portugal. Good luck to you with the challenge that you've got on your hands there of continuing to report important information uh, and not get caught up in the noise and the crosstalk. But people got to speak. You know, that's what I'm, I'm saying. Um, people do need to be heard. And even if we don't like what they say, we know what happens if you drive people's um, needs to communicate underground. It's not good. Um, if you shame people, it's not good. I mean, how many people do you know with a different view to you who you've tried to shame into agreeing with you? I imagine that made them believe what they believed even stronger. Not it didn't. They didn't suddenly say, oh, yeah, thanks for shaming me. I suddenly agree with everything you say. You are a much more virtuous and better person than me. Doesn't happen, does it? Uh, the quiz, what does quatre generations de Pajal mean? Four generations, I think we're on the right start there. Four generations of passion. Get on. I'm guessing they're talking about the family history of winemaking. I think they absolutely are. That's our wine we're tasting on Saturday um, with Eloise. Uh, we are trying this. It is a combination of Barga, Merlot and Loriga grapes from this region where I'm talking to you from now, the Bayrada region. So I'm loving that. Four generations of passion um, is a lovely turn of phrase worthy of the Fernando Pachon. Good morning from Fundal, from Julie. Morning, Luisa. Falesh is a lovely little place. The beach is fabulous. Here we go. This is what we like here on the Good Morning Portugal Report. Uh, I'm completely hidden by uh, Claire's uh, comments here. Uh, the beach is fabulous and is great for walking the dogs early doors. It runs to Villa Mora one way, which we walked the other day and as far the other way. Plenty of swimming and bodyboarding. Whilst we've loved Lule, Lule, being by the beach is great for the mind. So true and so possible here in Portugal. Finally, then, I'm saying, you know, the forward uh, prescription, prognosis, the way to deal with the pandemic, the lesson we could learn is to be closer to the land, right? So let us look at such a property. And um, look, going now to home key, like I said, don't think I've shared one of these before. I might have done, I might have shared one, but if these I don't hear a lot about home key. Uh, rural properties in Portugal is their thing. Uh, this property under the guidance of Melanie Grunlio. And uh, I have to talk all sorts of languages here, don't I? Um, look at these. We'll come back again and look at these pictures again. Look at that. Similar to the one we shared you, with you yesterday, the tiny house. Stunning off-grid property, this one. Castella Branco is the location. 4,000 square meters. Kinta, off-grid property. Plots, ruin, renovation project is how it's described. It's for sale. Stunning off-grid property at Riverside for sale. Beautiful. Uh, total area of area just under 4,000 at 3,856. A registered stone building consisting of two floors and bordered by a small river that runs all year round. This land is a real gem. Very quiet and absolutely private. Peacefulness guaranteed. Only a few meters walk from the part of the river where you can swim or take a bath in the fresh, clean water. Ooh, sounds fantastic. The property features several other olive trees. F fruit trees, a well, an irrigation channel, a lavada, running through the land, and pine trees. The rural building has a construction area of 20 square meters and consists out of the ground and a first floor level and a cave. Wow. The roof is made from strong eucalyptus wood, located one kilometer from the village of Pedacera, Salzedas, and accessible by dirt road with a high with a high car, I guess that's like a car that's not too close where your sump plug is ripped asunder and oil is spilled everywhere. You need all preferably a four by four, they say. No mains water close by. This is for the hardiest of homesteaders, right? Electricity at 200 meters away, and there has been a quote of 2,000 euros to connect it up. So you could stay off grid, go solar, etc. Close to the dam of Pay the Seda and contact us for a viewing, they say. Two stories. Access via dirt road, so it's very secluded, close to a water stream, no neighbours, quiet area, well water and borehole. Let us just go th step through these pictures then. Thank you so much, Home Key Portugal. Loving the cut of your jib here. And um, where were we? Let's go back to the beginning, shall we? There's a lovely uh, aspect of the house. Love that stonework. And stepping through, looking at the pictures. There's a eucalyptus roof in fairly good repair. But you know, what do you expect, you know, from a property of this kind? 
And um, yeah, some nice internal views. Here are the externals. Look at that. There's the dirt track they talk about. I'm liking the look of that valley. I really am. And there you go, above the property there, They're surrounded by beautiful woodland. Nice aerial view of the property. Um, look at that. Very nice indeed. Very secluded, very special. And I wonder if we're going to get a picture. It's, it's all been cleared, isn't it, for fire safety by the look of it. And there's your Levada, your water channel. More aerial shots of the olive trees. Real pretty. Oh, look, there's your river that you're going to go and have a bath in. You could be a real wild man of the woods, couldn't you, living here as a writer and poet in the kind of spirit of Fernando Pachon, developing 75 writing personas. Look at these beautiful river shots. That's where you go. That's where you get discovered, bathing in the woods like some kind of um, yeti or something. Uh, what's, the, what's the other word for yeti? Uh, anyway, I forget now. But anyway, yeah, you could be discovered as a really hairy wild guy um, in that uh, river there at some point in the future as you go feral and return to nature homekeyportugal.com for that one uh, i guess if you just ask for yes hotel 389er the quinta santayera okay that, let's leave it there for today thank you so much for your company really appreciate it enjoy myself really enjoy myself sharing that those poetry quotes from um Pachal to you uh, no wonder he is the bard of portugal and yes uh, joseph is saying that is a beautiful area uh Kish de la Branca there so it's not just me who likes looking at property um I think a few don't we all I mean that's the appeal of these property programs isn't it and I'm doing a bit to share some incredible properties we didn't say how much that one cost did we I mean that's the real beauty of this one 14,000 euros or because yeah sorry there must be people going well how much is it 14,000 euros and of course Sasquatch is who you would be <laughs> mistaken for possibly when you got really hairy in the woods there, having lived in that place for five years to be discovered by anthropologists and a TV crew <laughs> having disappeared there, <laughs> living your life. Okay, take care. Até amanhã, taloga. We'll be back tomorrow with Filomena talking Portuguese. Please don't miss that. Okay, we've been lazy. And um, we are with the firm but fair teaching style, I believe, is my sense of the lady, uh, that she'll be with us tomorrow. Philomena will be with us tomorrow to uh, teach us uh, and for us to learn some Portuguese. Take care, folks. Bye for now. Thank you for being with me this morning. <laughs>